Hey everybody, we're going to be talking about monomers and polymers today. So mono, mono means one. Poly means more than one. So a monomer is just one simple structure. A polymer is made up of several of those structures. We call them subunits. And we hook them together to make a more complex structure. So say we wanted to build a brick wall. Your monomer would be a brick. If you added another monomer, another subunit to it, now you have two bricks together. It's not all that complex yet, right? Because we haven't added enough monomers together. So let's add some more. Now we have several bricks and maybe we'll start on our second layer. Now the structure is becoming much more complex and we can build this wall really long and really tall if we want. But but what it's made out of are simple repeating subunits. Now in construction, when you build a brick wall, you want it to be fairly permanent. So we use mortar or cement to hold the bricks together so that hopefully the wall won't ever fall down. But in biology, we don't like to commit that much. We want our structures that we're building to be strong, but we don't want them to be permanent. We want to be able to break down the structure if we don't need it anymore or if it ever begins to wear out. We want to be able to uh, break it down. So we're going to hold our monomers together with bonds. Okay, We just talked a lot about covalent bonds and that's exactly what we hold our monomers together with in the body. So here's our brick and I've put two hydroxide um, ions on the end of it, and they're covalently bonded onto our brick. If I had another brick that looked just the same, so another subunit, you would notice that the um, OHs are close to one another. If we added an enzyme, which is a catalyst that helps us do reactions in the body, it could help us perform a chemical reaction, which is basically these two uh, groups that are hanging off of our subunits can react with one another. And in fact, we're going to cause them to leave. We're going to allow them to bind together and they're going to leave and go over there. So we have removed two hydrogens and one oxygen, which we know is water. So we've removed a water molecule from our two subunits. But now our oxygen that's hanging out there is very lonely. It doesn't have another atom to share its electrons with. So we're going to let it share its electrons with the other monomer. And so we've created a covalent bond between the two monomers. So we can hook these two monomers together with covalent bonds with the help of an enzyme. And in fact, we have some big, long, fancy words that describe exactly this. Okay, so over here at the top, this is showing dehydration synthesis or a dehydration reaction. We have our subunits, one and two, and we're going to remove an OH and an H. So we're going to remove water. This is why it's called dehydration, because we're removing water. And because we have removed that water molecule, those subunits will then form a covalent bond, and we'll hook our two subunits together. The opposite reaction is called hydrolysis. We'll start down here. We already have our subunits connected to one another, so we have a polymer down here, and we're going to add water back in. When we add water back in with the help of an enzyme, we're actually going to disrupt that covalent bond between our two subunits. We're going to break it and we're going to break apart subunit one from subunit two. So that's called hydrolysis. If you break it down, hydro means water, and lysis means breaking or tearing apart. So hydrolysis or hydrolysis is when you add water and pull two subunits apart. So the overall reaction with dehydration synthesis is that we're going to build larger molecules. This is how we take small subunits and we build large macromolecules. 
Hydrolysis is the opposite. This is how if you eat a candy bar for breakfast, you are going to pull all the subunits of the materials that make up the candy bar apart so that we can absorb them during digestion. Quick review, a monomer would be a single subunit. In my example, I was using a brick. A polymer would be lots of subunits connected together that would build a wall or a house. So it's a much bigger, much more complicated structure, a polymer. And again, I want you to remember that monomers are held together in these structures by covalent bonds. And remember, covalent bonds is the sharing of electrons. When we create larger molecules, we call them macromolecules. And again, they're just made from adding together our subunits. There are four types of macromolecules in the body. We have carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids. So three of these macromolecules from adding together repeating subunits, lipids isn't quite the same. For the information on that, watch the next video on macromolecules. Have a great day.